Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking through a little 100,000 coin to 1 million coin trading methods. Whether you find yourself anywhere in that budget, whether you're trying to go from 100K to a million, or you just hit about 500,000 and you're trying to get to a million or above, or if you're even in a million coins and you just want to know how can I flip some cards to make coins on the daily inside a FIFA Ultimate Team. Investing isn't stuff that we do in FIFA all the time. So trading, flipping, and just trend, um, you know, knowing trends and knowing cards going up and down on daily fluctuations is a very easy way to make coins in this game. And if you learn it and you get good at it, you can make millions, all right? You can make millions doing this in FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. These methods I'm gonna show you today are very common. But if you find the right players, you do it in the right ways, and especially if you time things right, you can make millions of coins doing this on FIFA Ultimate Team. These are ways that I used to trade all the time. And actually, uh, I'm not somebody that spends a ton of time trading on this game, to be honest with you, just because I have a lot of other um, things that take up my time. But I just hit a million on Transfer Profit, and we are just past week one of this game. So definitely not near the top by any means, but I use these methods to get almost, I'm not quite at a million coins yet, but I'm almost, I just did go above 1 million in transfer profit. So I want to talk you through these trading methods because these are working fantastic right now. I'm honestly telling you guys, these are just bang on trading methods for the time that we are in right now. The first thing I want to go over is position change trading methods. So what we're doing is finding cards that have position modifier cards already applied to them. And there's they sell for more on the market because it's easier for somebody to go buy. Let's use Wynaldum as an example, right off the bat. Wynaldum, I think right now is somewhere around 100,000 coins as a very high demand midfielder in uh, the Premier League inside of FIFA 21 ultimate team looks like he is about 98,000 coins or so. The, these these market glitches this year are terrible. So you really got to make sure you find the right price. So 97,000 coins for Wijnaldum right now. How much does Wijnaldum go for as a standard defensive mid, right? That's a position change. But if you're playing Wijnaldum, you know, you're playing, you're probably playing him as a center mid or a center defensive mid. And it looks like Wijnaldum's going for not too much more. So that's not a really good example. Somebody that a lot of people have been trading with in the in the FIFA community is this nine goal card. So let's take a look at him right now. Nine Golan with the center defensive mid position change is basically 20,000 coins, right? There's one right here for 18K. And since this card is getting washed a lot, oh, I'm surprised it hasn't got bought yet. He's 20,000 coins though at the center defensive mid position change, right? Let's go find his normal center mid card. How much is this going for? 16,000 coins for a center attacking mid version of Raj and I Golan. So obviously people are going to be listing up these Rajas at around 16,000 coins even less than that, possibly, if they're undercutting. And what you can do is somebody looks at the foot, the cheapest price on Footbin and they see, wow, nine goal and 16,000 coins. But their version of the card has a center defensive mid position change on it. That card is going to sell, as we saw, for around 20,000 coins on the market. Maybe even 19,000 coins. You list yours up as the cheapest, right? As a CDM nine goal. And this is, a, this is like a fantastic... These cards pop up all the time, man. People position change all the time. You could, what you can do is you can either bid or snipe on these guys. Again, 20,000 coins for this nine goal. And there's the one for 18K is still there, but that's like a 2K undercut. Honestly, I could flip that for 1K if I wanted to, but I'll pass. What you can do is if you know that he's selling, you can sell him at like, you know, 19,000 coins. What I would do here, and I know that his lowest price is about 16K, I would sit here and snipe him at about 17 to allow myself some profit margin. And if one pops up, great. But this is like a sniping filter. You can find six, seven, eight players that you can do this with. I personally love the center defensive mid position change for players that are, you know, center mids or center attacking mids that most people would play at a CDM. You know, Wijnaldum was an example, but he doesn't have that much of a price gap at the moment. Um, other examples might be Allen. Um, another example for me is Sissoko and Dombele. Even guys on a lower budget like Vidal. Christian Eriksen were, were cards that I did this with um, that start as a center attacking mid or a center mid, but people also play them as a CDM. So this is a really, really good method to do that. The best players to find, the best way to find players to do this with is go on footbin.com, go to the players tab, drop down, click on popular, and that'll bring up this page right here because the players that are in this page are the players that people are searching up the most on footbin because they want to purchase them or they're interested in them. This just shows the amount of demand that some of these cards have. So you want to find a guy, the young 
Young might be another one that would be a great center mid to CDM position change uh, trade. You might want to find, click around this page a little bit, right? Look up some cards, find some cards that have price gaps between that CDM and that center mid position change that actually sell, right? Maybe, you know, some cards you can actually transition from like center mid to cam as well, if that is applicable for the card. Or uh, I see a lot of Agueros at center attacking mid. That card kind of sells for a little bit extra money. You can even look at right wing. Sometimes a right mid with a right wing or right forward will sell for extra amount of money. I think Bergwine, if you position him to, to left forward, actually sells for a decent amount. Um, that's a little position change filter that you can use. But any card that is either a left wing, right wing, especially the, the center attacking mids, center mids, and center defensive mids, since those for, there's a lot of different formations where those cards could be used for chemistry and people need position changes to put cards in certain spots, um, that is like the number one method that I'm using right now on this game. So just kind of look through, right? Find some different players that have different price gaps, right? Now we have this nine goal who sells right around 20,000 coins with the CDM position change. So we're going to try to snipe him at around 16 K or 17 K where his card is actually being listed up at when people are packing it or whatever. And uh, his lowest price on flipping and try to flip that card for a profit. So that is method number one. And that is honestly a crazy crazy good method at the moment. Let's go to method number two, which is very similar, but instead of position changes, we're doing chemistry styles. Now, last year, this type of trading was unreal. Chemistry style trading last year was undefeated in FIFA 20. This was a huge, huge moneymaker uh, almost all year in the game because Shadow and Hunter chemistry styles were so, so, so expensive. This year, they're not as expensive, but this trading method is still very profitable because people will pay the extra coinage instead of going out and buying the chemistry style themselves. They will just go buy the card with the chem style already applied. So it looks like Musa Sissoko is selling for around, this is an undercut, but he's look, looks like he's selling for around 47, 46, 47,000 coins for a his card with a shadow chemistry style on it, which is the chemistry style you'd probably use on Musa Sissoko to get the best value from that card. Now, if we go look at his card, he's actually selling for 43K on the market. So a 43,000 coin flip and then selling that card all the way at maybe 46 or 47K. There's not a lot of profit there. So maybe we're going to look at somebody else, but let's try like a left back or like, let's try Trent. Uh, I haven't actually traded with this. So this is kind of like just a blind suggestion, which maybe isn't the best since I'm recording this on a YouTube video. Uh, but let's see what's Trent going for. Trent is the kind of guy that you definitely need a shadow on. So it looks like Trent's about 50,000 coins. How much is Trent with a shadow on him? I would not be surprised if it's like five to six K more. All right, there was one at 55. So Trent with a shadow looks to be about 53,000 coins. And it looks like without the shadow, he's going for about 49K. So this would be ooh, 48K and undercut. So that's kind of the gist of it. It's the same thing as the position change method, except you're using chemistry styles. Again, I really like going through this page because the players that you're going to see on this page, you know, left backs, center defensive mids, center backs are great with the shadows. And then, you know, center attacking mids, a guy like Aguero would be, would sell like hotcakes with a Hunter. De Bruyne would sell a lot with a Hunter because they just need that pace boost or maybe the shooting boost. Nabry with a Hunter chemistry style on him. Uh, maybe a Firmino would be great with the Hunter Kemp style. Griezmann, I know, is great. Holland, I know, trades well with the Hunter. Uh, I think even Royce trades well with the Hunter. So going through a lot of these cards and just figuring out, hey, which cards sell for just... You have to make sure that there's enough of a gap between what they actually are selling for as their cheapest price on Footbin or on the market and what they sell for with that chemistry style in order for you to make profit on the game and in order for you to, you know, you have to also make sure that there's a decent amount of listings that are popping up as well. Cause if a player is never getting listed, it's gonna be hard to find those undercut snipes. So maybe somebody who's a little bit lower rated like in Diddy could be a good card to trade with, with a CDM or with a shadow, uh, with a position change. So that's just two of those methods right there that are very similar, but are very, very profitable right now. And then the other things are, right? Just fluctuation trading, like I mentioned earlier in the video, fluctuation trading is another way where I make a lot of coins. Now, only one of these, as I'm recording this video, only one set of Team of the Week cards is out of packs right now. But if we look at some of these graphs, you can tell that these guys fluctuate on the daily. And what we're going to look for on a normal day, on a, on a price graph of this Jamie Vardy inform, and we're going to look at another inform as well, is just enough fluctuation that if we buy at the low point, when we know it gets too low per se, and then we can sell at a high point where we know that card's going to fluctuate up and down just in a normal day of FIFA Ultimate Team, we can make profit from that. So you can see 
Jamie Vardy today is 223,000 coins right now. That's like his highest point on all these graphs, by the way. Uh, he was 190,000 coins in the morning on Saturday. Kind of rose back up to 200, went back down to 198, bounced back to 210, back down to 200, back up to 210. And you can see these kind of these fluctuations that happen each day. Now, Vardy would be kind of hard to trade with because there's 10,000 coins of tax here at a 200,000 coin card. So I would try to buy this Vardy card for like under 200K, but then I wanted, I want to try to sell it around 220 to make 10K a card, which I think is a, a reasonable amount of profit at this stage. So maybe that's a good fluctu a fluctuation now, but it hasn't been going all the way up to 220 per the flipping graphs. Lozano is another one that would be very, very good. Check this out. He dipped down to 87,500 coins and peaked at 97 and 95. So of course, we only have about 5,000 coins of tax here. So if we can buy this, you know, if this says 87,000 coins, but actually if you would go on the market at this time, Flippin might've said 87K, but there might've been undercuts at 83,000, 85,000. So just kind of watching the market and knowing when these cards dip down low can be a really big thing for just fluctuation trading throughout the day and knowing when those cards, you know, each day he hit 95K, right? Saturday, what did he hit? He hit 92K, he hit 94K on Saturday, he hit a low of 86K. So 86,000 coins, sell at 94. There's definitely a little bit of profit in there. Not a ton, but a little bit. And this is the same way you trade with icons as well. I'm gonna look up like a random icon here. Let's look up Baby Vintage. Uh, well, this is the middle. Let's go to the Baby Vintage card, which is 689,000 coins, right? If we look at this card on a daily, icons fluctuate like this a lot too. He went down to 665 and then went back to 723,000 coins. That's a very profitable, um, you know, range that a card would fluctuate on between a given day. Now, there wasn't as much fluctuation on this Saturday. He went from 690 up to about mm, 730 at his highest point. So not a ton of profit in that. But that's kind of a good example of how these informs can fluctuate. And if you just learn the prices, of these team of the week cards that are going out of packs every single week if you kind of take take a glance at some of these cards right up Makano is up a lot gomez is up a lot and if you would just kind of watch these guys on the daily like flip up Makano might get down to like 157 or 160,000 coins and if you know it's going to get back up to 175 at one point on the daily fluctuation that's an easy 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 way to trade uh, on this game. And you don't need a ton of coins to do this. Honestly, the way that I was showing you with the nine Golan, you don't even need 100,000 coins. But the really thing, when you have 100,000, 200,000 coins with this, what you can do is, is you can really start to um, multiply. And you can, instead of doing it with one Raja nine Golan and having to wait on this card to sell at around 20,000 coins, because you need to get this card to sell so that you have other coins to go buy another item. But right now I'm heavily invested. I'm waiting for the market to rise. But uh, if I had coins and I have 200,000 coins, I could flip like five or six of these nine gold ones at the same time and have other stuff just on my transfer list, flipping cards constantly and flipping in and out, right? Constantly having cards move, right? That is what makes you profit is consistently having cards moving in and moving out. And all of these trading methods, especially the position change and the chemistry style methods, are big time for keeping cards moving in and out, constantly buying, constantly selling, even if it's smaller profits, five, six, 7,000 coins per card. If you're flipping one of those cards per hour, uh, if, you're, if you're getting one sale every hour and you've got 10 cards listed over its 10 hours, you know, you just made 50,000 coins and that's not that hard to do buying a few cards, right? Always have your cards listed as well. This is one thing that I say all the time. If you have your cards listed on the market, this year there's so many market glitches where it only shows us one page of supply or it only shows us one page of players. Like I'm searching uh, Alexander Arnold here at 53,000 coins. I know for a fact there's more than just these few cards that are up on the market. But if I go down and search at like 49,000 coins or 50,000 coins, I'll get just as many cards popping up. Um, there's so many market glitches this year, right? I searched at 51K. All these cards didn't show up before when I was searching at 53K, but there's so many market glitches this year that you can, I guess, take advantage of almost. So listing your cards at all times, people might not get an actual representation of all the cards that are on the market when they search for somebody. They might see yours, even at an inflated price, and buy it, right? So I've got this Rano Sanchez listed at 70,000 coins. He actually sells for 60K. Somebody might just think he's around, he was 70,000 coins a couple days ago. Somebody might still think he's that same price or they think, yeah, that seems right for that card. I'm just going to go buy it 
and boom, you have a lazy buy or sale. So always have your cards listed. It doesn't have to be for the cheapest price, right? That's the whole point with like the fluctuations that we were talking about with like Lozano and with Jamie Vardy. Your card is not always going to be the cheapest listed on the market. It doesn't have to be, right? That's just fine if it's not because you know that at some point during the day, right here, Lozano's at 92,000 coins. You might even be able to snag one on bid when his buy it now on Footbin shows 87K and he's on the low down of his, of his fluctuation for the day. You might be able to snag one on bid for 83, but you know that, hey, he's gonna be able to get up to 95 at one point. I might be able to stretch a sale for 97K to a quote unquote lazy buyer. That's stuff that you can also consider into when you're flipping these cards on the daily as well. So those three methods right there, you're set, man. You can do that literally for the entirety of the year, FIFA 21. You can start to trade with the with the chemistry styles, with the position changes. And then if you learn to fluctuation trade, you can fluctuation trade with literally any card on this game because cards fluctuate literally all day long. Out of packs cards do it the best. Icons do it the best. As we get more promos throughout the year, that kind of trading is going to come to the forefront. And especially if, if you're, you know, let's say you get a Lozano here and he's got a hunter chemistry style on him, that card might, you can combine fluctuation trading and position change or chemistry style trading at the same time. Use all of that knowledge from learning those trading methods and you know you can stack them on top of each other. Maybe a Lozano with a hunter with a right forward position change that you bought on a low of 85,000 coins when his price said 87 and you got a snipe, you might be able to sell that for like 100, over 100,000 coins just because you find that one buyer who wants all those things together you might be able to sell that card for a little bit more. So learning all those things, th these types of trading methods teach you the most about the market and you learn the most about the market by doing these methods. And that's why I enjoy them so much. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. This is how I'm making coins right now. I, I wish I would not have cleared my transfer list from like two days ago because I had around 80 cards up here. I was flipping, um, who was it? I had nine Golans, I had Ndombele's, I had Christian Eriksen's, I had um, Vidal's. Vidal's like 5,000 coins, or he was when I'm recording this video. I was buying him for 3,500 coins with a CDM position change and selling him for 5,000 coins literally minutes later with that position change. 1,500 coins per card. So after tax, like, I mean, 5,000 coins is like no tax, but you get you get the drill. You know the drill, right? This just You can print coins using this method. Now, it does require a little bit of time, and it requires a bit of effort. It's not just I buy a card here and I sell it here. But this is how you learn the most about the market again. And that's why I enjoy and, and love it so much. Just the flipping, the concentrating. And this can really, if you get good at this, you can make millions of coins using these methods on FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. So that was a longer video, but I wanted to explain it all. Wanted to explain it fully. If it did help you out, smash the thumbs on it. Thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.